So uh, what are clip models and how are these leveraged in these kinds of text to image uh, tasks that we've been talking about, like Dolly and Stable Diffusion? Yeah, cool. So a clip model is one part of Dolly 2. Um, and specifically, I'll, I'll come into exactly which part and, and how it's used. Um, because Clip itself isn't a generative model. Clip itself is actually, it uses a technique called contrastive learning to effectively map pairs of text and images. So you could imagine, say, you've got a data set where you've got loads of pairs of uh, uh, images and their corresponding um, descriptions. So let's say you've got a picture of a, a field with a tractor in, and then you've got a text description that says, this is a field with a tractor in on a sunny day. Okay, so... What Clip does is it tries to learn a model that um, can match the image to its matching text description. And the way it does that is it trains two different kinds of transformer, um, which we can, we can come onto the details of. A transformer for the text side basically says, can you encode this text description into a, a vector? And the transformer on the image side, which says, can you encode this image into a vector? And then what it's doing is taking these two vectors and quite simply, just calculating cosine similarity between them. Um, and what you want is you want true pairs to have a very high cosine similarity score, and you want mismatched pairs to have a very low similarity score. And that is what the clip training process does. It tries to find this kind of like identity matrix of um, along the diagonal, you get very high scores. Um, because you've, these are the matching pairs along the, the diagonal, if you can imagine the images in the, on the, the rows and the, the text on the, on the columns. And on the off diagonal, you want this to be as, as small as possible because you, you don't want these things to be uh, regarded as, um, as similar. So it's a bit like a, like a recommendation algorithm, you know, like is this image recommended to be with this uh, text? And so this isn't generative, right? We're not going to be producing more images through this. Mm -hmm. One of the cool things about this, I think, because OpenAI released this clip model standalone as well, like this. And so one of the cool things about this uh, approach, that, and it, it follows on from what you were just describing, is that this allows you to have an image classification algorithm that didn't necessarily have the label that you'd like to extract in the training data. So mm -hmm. you, um, you so when we were 10 years ago, the state of the art, and up until very recently, the state of the art in image classification, so with models like Jeff Hinton's AlexNet that came out in 2012, that was trained on the ImageNet data set, which had tens of thousands of different labeled categories, cats, horses. It had tons of different kinds of dogs because mm -hmm. they used that as like, um, they wanted the model to to be able to demonstrate that not only is it good at classifying a wide range of images, but also for a specific um, like category of images, it could distinguish fine details and be able to distinguish a Yorkshire Terrier from an Australian Silky Terrier, even though these are extremely similar looking dogs. Mm -hmm. And uh, so the state of the art was that you needed to, I guess, going back to one of our first topics in this conversation, talking about discriminative models, where we were discriminating down to specific class labels. And even if it was tens of thousands of labels, you still, you could not use a model trained in that approach, in this discriminative approach, to be able to guess yeah. <laughs> a label that's outside of the 10,000 labels that's been trained on. Um, but with Clip, we get exactly that. So with Clip, you can just say, <laughs> you could just ask it to label images that it's never seen before in class categories that it's never seen before, but it uses, um, yeah, it uses this approach Correct. that you just described to map it to any natural language. Yeah, precisely. And it, you know, it's, it's the reason it can work is because it's encoding everything into the same latent space. It doesn't matter if it's not a label in the data set. You can make it a, a label by doing by pushing it through the encoder, whether it's an image or a text. Right. So it's a the the latent space, the the meaning that is embedded in this latent space, we we can extract that visually or linguistically. Exactly. And that's what DALI2 uh, excels at. It, it basically takes the text embedding from your input. So say you've written something about, I want to see a cat riding a skateboard. Then it takes that text embedding and tries to predict what the image in the corresponding image embedding looks like. That's called the prior. And then the final step takes the image embedding and uses diffusion to generate the image. So it's like a three-step process. Text goes through the text encoder to create the text embedding. And that's, that's just the clip text uh, embedding. 
You've then got a prior which sits in the middle that says, now go and predict me what the equivalent image embedding looks like in the latent, latent space of the image model, and then just decode it. Um, I mean, I say just, there's a lot of work that's gone into that, but mm. that is how DALI 2 works. Nice. Okay, super cool. So this clip approach, great, uh, not only for associating natural language that wasn't in the, the label training data, um, but also great for allowing DALI 2 to be so much more effective than its predecessor, Dolly. Um, and um, and yeah, so I guess we already talked about it. I was gonna ask you a question about how clip can be used for zero shot prediction, but I think we've already covered that. So this idea of zero shot prediction is using a machine learning model, typically a large language model, to be able to uh, do some task that it wasn't trained on and mm -hmm. without any training examples at all. So you just write, you know, you take the model weights as they were trained and you say, uh, do this task. And so, you know, uh, you know, is there, is there a skateboard in this image? Mm -hmm. um, and it can answer that question, even if it's never been trained to do that. Precisely. Yeah, that's exactly it. Yeah. Even if you've never sort of shown it, uh, you've never given it that task before, it can have a good go at it.